Hi, I'm Daniel, this is Asheville, and this is part two of how we took an old skip and created a speedboat. I had this crazy idea to take an old Asheville skip and create a speedboat. If you haven't already seen it, please watch that video first. Thought I'd take a skip and a motor, put them together and see what I came up with. This one is our best option. This skip is gonna become a boat. Here's our engine beginning to look like a ship already. And now we're gonna lower her in and see how we get on. Now after the design and build and successful maiden voyage at Sandwich Marina, we decided that we needed a few improvements and alterations if I'm ever gonna cross the English Channel. Because of the water that's gonna come splashing in when we begin to go faster, we're gonna weld some channel on the side here. We're gonna weld channel on the other side and we're gonna put another piece in the middle. Then we can screw some perspex to it so we can see where we're going, but we can stop water coming in from the front. At the back, we're gonna cut off the tipping hooks as well, because we wanna get rid of a little bit of weight. There was a little bit of water splashing in. Now we can't stop that because of the height we've got here, but what we can do is run another piece which will limit the splashing that bit more. At each corner on a diagonal piece here, I'm gonna replicate a cleat. So we're gonna make something ourselves. So when we have the fenders here, we can tie them up. We went through multiple ideas and designs of how we're gonna stabilize the boat. We thought about having some timber and spraying it in fiberglass, getting some steel and putting it in the water, but that would have been too heavy. But we've gone with this six inch underground pipe. We've used this threaded bar which is gonna wrap around. And we're gonna have a piece of angle and then another piece of angle directly opposite. We're gonna put a bolt through and that bolt is gonna pivot like this. We're gonna attach it just below the number here because the last time it was in the water, that was where the watermark was. There's gonna be considerable pressure going against these side supports. So we've put this two inch angle in place. We go in here and lift slightly. Here, we've got two nuts and we've tightened them up against each other so this can't come loose. Now you'll notice that all these stabilizing bars are numbered. Each of them is bespoke made. So one goes with one, four goes with four, and so on. We've drilled these stabilizers and we filled them with expanding foam. You can see the little dots of silicone where we've sealed it. Also, we put silicone through the middle to ensure no water gets through. At the ends, we have rubber caps and they are fitted on with Jubilee clips. Now with all four pipes attached, we need to make sure our skip boat can still fit on the skip lorry. We intentionally made these pipe stabilizers able to remain fixed and fold away on a pivot for ease of transport. Millimeter, ah, my God. It just fits. Let's get it back off and do some final bits. We've had a successful visit to the car boot cell. We managed to get six fenders in my favorite color. Now, these will stop the boat when it's docking from getting damaged, and we should be able to tie these onto our new cleats on the side. And that same nice man at the car boot sale, he had these. Now, I'm told these are for paddle boarding, but these are gonna be my oars. So if I manage to run out of fuel or I get stranded, this is how I'm gonna paddle my way back to shore. Now our frame at our lovely viewing platform is done, but we don't have any plastic perspex at the moment. We're waiting to need some on a job so we can cut a little bit and use it here. Flagpole time. So we have this stay for Harris fencing, what we want to put here, but that angle is probably a bit too steep. So we're gonna cut it off here, weld it back so it's a bit straight. But what we're gonna do is ensure that we can still take the flagpole out because if we leave it on when this is on the back of the skip lorry, it's gonna get taken out by a bridge. Now I've heard it's bad luck not to name a boat. The first name that came to mind was Jenna, but that name was already taken. So I think I'm gonna name this boat after my late grandmother, Rita.
The boat is beginning to get very rusty. We don't have anywhere to store it and we haven't got a cover over it because this is not a boat yard. So we're gonna have to think of a solution to stop it. Eventually, when we know it's 100%, I'm actually gonna sandblast the entire boat and give it a lovely coat of paint, but I don't want to do that yet because I don't know how many other alterations we need to make. We are now ready to go to sea but we are at the mercy of the tide. So I keep checking the tide timetable and we're gonna be going out in a couple of weeks. If we are successful, we're gonna to continue to make additions like mm -hmm. a telescope, an additional fuel tank, liquid membrane on the floor and a brand new paint job. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think is gonna happen when we get our skip boat out onto the open water. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see part one of this video where we take this boat out of Sandwich Marina and click here to see a social experiment where we put a skip on a London road.